Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled. I am Peter, that is Tara, and we are going to talk about Watchmen Season 1, Episode 3. It's called She Was Killed by Space Junk. So, full spoilers for the episode, as always. And we have been waiting on one Laurie Blake making her entrance, and not only does she make her entrance in this episode, this entire episode is about her, it is from her perspective. Uh, they give her a, a hero's introduction, uh, where the entire thing is just really about her. I mean, we, we do see other characters, of course, as she runs into them, but it's very much about her interest in where she is right now. But before we do that, Tara was missing last week, so I have a couple mm-hmm. of questions about last week's episode. Well, one, did you like it? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry Excellent. that I missed it, because I actually wanted to talk about it. Uh... To your feelings on the American Hero Story segment. I'm glad that this dystopian future also has HBO. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of discrepancies that are listed before the show started. And, <laughs> and like, nobody cares. They just let their kids watch it anyway. It's great. Yeah. In fact, uh, someone in the comments did actually tell us that uh, that was Hoodie Justice. Because I-, I couldn't remember who it was in the, the last review. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, and I I think they're playing Hooded Justice uh, for a reason because I think I think the guy in the wheelchair is the Hooded Justice. Mm. I mean, I think that's what the episode is trying to say. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't shout me. In fact, I think the comment on the, the video actually th- even pondered the same thing. Uh, so, I thought I was super smart deducing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the episode's trying to say that. Yeah. I mean, he I mean, he claims that he hanged the sheriff and I also but I, just wears a noose around his neck and it's kind of like a opposite clan uniform, you know? Like I, I, I did I did point that out last week. I pointed out it was like a it was like a clan, clan hood, but obviously opposite colors. Um, mm-hmm. So I, what I liked about it though, because I said this kind of about the flashbacks in the first episode, but I, I now I've, I switched in the second episode to thinking this American uh, hero story will be this show's version of the the, the Black Freighter. Uh, I think we're going to see more of it sprinkled throughout the season. Sure, I mean it said, I mean it's kind of set up like American Crime Story or American Horror Story. I lost that. That's the joke. Like yeah. Maybe each episode or each season is about a different. A superhero vigilante like from oh, sure. yeah. the the uh i think they were called the minutemen mm-hmm. from the original minutemen like there was a rorschach episode and then there's a one on hooded justice and maybe that's a way for us to get like caught up on who the other heroes were maybe. if it needs I, to maybe we'll get like another one in season two but i feel i feel like we're going to stick with hooded justice because I, I think if, it, if that does turn out to be well then I think mm-hmm. that it's going to be important to see more of that journey, like more of what that story is that's playing yeah. uh, throughout the season. So um, I'd expect that. Um, also, I guess I also just have to briefly ask your thoughts on the giant ship with the magnet at the end that took the car away. <laughs> Can't say I have any. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> and also, actually, actually, another important question. Uh, is Judd really a clansman? Or is that a red herring slash frame job? Well, I I don't know. Like the episode really wants you to think that he is, um, or he's he's some kind of cavalry leader or clansman, grand wizard, whatever. Because mm. he, he's got, uh, I don't know. Because because you have that flashback scene also where Angela is a total badass and. It was a really it was a really really great scene. Oh yeah, yeah. And um, you know, there's there's two cavalry men that enter her home. One of them gets killed by Angela, and the other has a shotgun pointed to her when she passes out. And then when she wakes up, Judd's there, and he says, uh, "You got you got the the cavalry guy who attacked you." Um, instead of saying one got away, yeah. so clearly, like. They didn't catch another cavalry. Like somebody left, whether he was, he left on his own or somebody like took him away. We don't really know. Uh, well, I even so, pointed last week that that could be Judd. Like that could have been right. Him. I think yeah. that's what. I mean, she literally like closes her eyes on the gunman and then opens them back up, and Judd's in front of her. Yeah, like, but that, I, that's. I think it's, but it's also so on the nose that I, I kind it of could think. Be, yeah. yeah. The, I the, mean, this, I mean, the puzzle is getting 
you know, more complicated than it is becoming clear. Yes. And I love it. You know, I'm still so, very into it. So. Yeah, I just wanted to, I wanted to bring up a few of the major beats from last week. I'm sure there's other things that are worth talking about, but uh, I, 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 I talked about it last week. Everyone, you can go go see that. We're here to talk about episode three. Yeah. And episode three, uh, it opens with with you know Laurie Laurie Blake from the comics who is now you know what pushing sixty <laughs> and she's in yeah. the FBI she's in the anti vigilante task force and the episode has this framing device um, of and we find out it, it becomes clear by the time we end the framing device that this is all set after the rest of the, the story this is all sort of at the end of the night that we we end the story mm-hmm. on um, but she goes to this this weird like phone booth thing that's blue and has like a man you know the atom symbol spinning and it's like you can you can send a message to mars so that dr manhattan can he- hear you say something uh because i guess they're treating them like god this is like someone going to church and praying they can they can come and right. talk to dr manhattan and i was thinking also maybe like maybe in a way like superman like if you need help you can ask for it and maybe he'll show up or maybe not but yeah. i guess the god comparison makes more sense yeah well i mean I, I think both work although of course in this case manhattan has literally not appeared in 30 years so like he's clearly yeah like it's going to take something really special to bring who knows when they set up those booths though or maybe manhattan did it for them who knows? yes oh actually i did have to make one more joke about last week and i've actually said this on the show i think i, I well, did i say it in the show i definitely tweeted this out <laughs> i don't know i'm not on twitter i don't know what you tweet so last week when I was watching the episode, I thought Tobias Funke showed up. And then uh, I remembered, no, it can't be him because he's a never nude. Yes. Yeah. Because he was blue and naked, you see, he had his penis out. Yeah, right, someone right, right. definitely blew themselves. Yeah, someone blew, <laughs> blew themselves, yes. That was the that was a joke. Uh, yeah. Anyway, it so, would have been so great <laughs> if they like lowered the ramp and instead of the blue dong you got cut off. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. If they, if they don't do that, if they've if they done a, another season of Arrested Development and they don't like, recreate that scene where it's Tobias and he's got the cutoffs on, I'll be disappointed. <laughs> so, she's oh, on yeah, the phone. Oh yeah, that's another thing that oh. from episode two that I'm just, I, I don't know what Veidt's doing. Like, oh yeah. I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> we'll get, we'll get to I him. I love every time we go to Veidt like i'm just i'm so well, curious on how this is unfolding joe's you know funny about the vice stuff though is that every week it is just one segment i mean there's usually a few scenes in the segment yeah. but it's always just one chunk so in, in this episode for example when it cut to him i went oh it's time for the weekly vite visit because it is just yeah. like one <laughs> chunk every episode so uh yeah. that's that's been fun building up that but so she's on the Vite phone and his clones uh clones, I assume clones clones robots they burn like people so <laughs> Well, it could be like the Terminator. They've got uh, flesh on the outside, real flesh on the outside, but they may have robotic parts on the inside. Maybe. Like Terminator. Pretty heavy. Like Terminator or Ted from the hit television show Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> Take your word for it. Yes, yeah, so there was a robot named Ted on Buffy. Just accept it and we can we can move on with the lives uh so laurie's on the phone to send a message to, to mars that dr manhattan may hear i mean maybe the assumption is that he hears all of them because he's manhattan and he you know he's, he's like everywhere and he can hear everything he's been there and there and back in the forest i don't think manhattan works that way he's not omnipotent no like he knows everything from where he's been like but i don't think he's he's not everywhere well, no, but he 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 effectively in time could be everywhere. He just has to make the choice to travel around back and forth and like, like because we've seen him make duplicates of himself. That was a big thing in the comics. He can be in multiple places at once. Remember Laurie getting mad at him because mm-hmm. he was like multitasking, like he was having sex with her, but also on the computer in the next yes. room. You know, like, but he doesn't time travel. Well, no, but as as long as there's a version of him. <sighs> Well, okay, put it this way. He knows where this signal's coming out of. Anytime he wants to, he can go and listen to it. So, like, okay. <laughs> like, there's a good chance if he wants to hear it, he'll go hear it. <laughs> if he's heard the message sometime in the future, he knows it now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes complete sense. Well, that's, that's, even before we get to what she's saying on the phone, it is worth mentioning, she she brings up other characters. We, we hear about Nightall, we hear about Ozymandias, we hear about, obviously, herself, we hear about Dr. Manhattan. This is easily, out of the three episodes, the one that is the most tied to Watchmen. And it is the one that, mm-hmm. definitively, I would say that if you have not read the book, or at least seen the movie, you will be lost. 
Um, and it was when she got to the punchline, well, not even the punchline, but when she got to like, because that was like her big main joke is split into each like a, like four sections, like one for each character she's talking about. And when she gets to the end of Manhattan one, it's got like, this mini punchline at the end. Like I'm like, if you've not read the book or at least seen the movie, you won't understand why that punchline is funny. You won't get it because it, it's relevant to like how Manhattan experiences time, and. It, it just you know it made me laugh and i went wait but if you've not read the book you won't understand that like it just mm-hmm. it, it's not been explained at all and i kind of loved that i kind of loved that the show's like no this is a sequel to watchmen you have to have at least seen the movie and even then you're better off, off reading the book but you still don't know what the psychic squid things are about yeah yeah and that's reference she <laughs> talks about the squid dropping on manhattan she, she brings it up uh oh actually i shouldn't say manhattan because of the character <laughs> on new york on new york in new york <laughs> let's not confuse yeah. the matter um but she's on the phone and she, she's telling this joke about uh, a father who's building a the like a barbecue area or something like that and it's all perfect but there's a brick left over and the the the, the, the father's going to take a sledgehammer to it and just destroy everything and the girl's like no we can do something with the brick and it's like she throws it as hard as she can up in there and then she's like no i screwed that up and the reason why i'm explaining this part because it sounds kind of superfluous on its own is because it does actually become relevant to the punchline of the whole thing later um mm-hmm. and you know we get this this story playing out um i don't know if i should really go through these first because the, the ending kind of ties into the main plot but um we're, we're talking about it damn it so we're doing it um and she's like no so here's the joke and it kind of splits up and i love that every time it comes to this and every time it like, goes back to like the main plot of her like you know investigating stuff and whatever the music in this episode like the music on in this show has been on point throughout and yeah i I I, really noticed it with angela's theme from mm, the last episode too yeah that pulse um yeah because the moment i loved is when she was faking being sick or ill or whatever and as soon as as soon as the as soon as jane left the room her eyes just moved to the side and it was like boom 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 like she's like like, okay yeah to this you're right it's like a pulse like a heartbeat yeah um where's cool it's a very cool show with a very cool soundtrack. Yeah. Laurie, on the other hand, has this very kind of ominous synth that kind of comes in. And it's kind of, mm-hmm. it repeats a lot in this episode. Um, and it gives it this really unique tone. And I love the atmosphere that this show is building a- around itself. And yeah, she's telling this joke. She's like, here's this joke, right? So these four heroes are at the pearly gates, right? And they see God. And they split into like one for each character. So the first character goes up, and I think the first one that goes up is Night Owl, right? She doesn't say the names, but you get you get it from context. Too. Yeah. But you get from the context who she's talking about. Again, if you've read the book and know these characters. If not, you're gonna be kinda of lost here. Uh but she's like, you know, hey, so you're a vigilante, you put on a mask and you help people. He's like, How many people have you killed? And he's like, Well, none. And he's like, Well, you're too soft. Snaps his fingers and the hero goes to hell, right? And that's like the first one. Um and then the second one, it's like, okay, so this, this, uh, this genius, no, no, it's not him next, actually, is it? Is it him next? Yeah. Yeah, it's him. Uh, it's like, all right, so, you know, what, what did you do? Like, you said, oh, I saved the world. Yeah, but how many people did you kill? Ah, three million, give or take. <laughs> give or take a few. It's like, well, that's awful. Snaps his and fingers. And God goes, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't make me laugh, actually. Um, it's like, snaps his fingers, go to hell. And then the one after that is uh, obviously in Manhattan, and she calls him a blue god, right? To, to, mm-hmm. to differentiate between the actual gods. <laughs> and it's like, so, you know, you know, what are you, blah, blah, blah. And when, you know, they get to the thing, he's like, well, you're already, I already know you're going to send me to hell, so there's no point in really answering. You know, in fact, when even he says like, "How how many you know people did you kill?" is like, "Well, dead or alive, everyone's the same amount of particles, so it doesn't really matter." <laughs> which is the most like, yeah. like <laughs> the, the part of the darkest Very answer. Yeah, yeah. Right. And he's like, "Well, I already know you're going to send me to hell, so that's just." Go. And he's like, "How do you know I'm going to do that? Because I'm already there." And that made me laugh. That was a good Manhattan joke because mm-hmm. that's how Manhattan experiences time: is that he already knows what's going to happen because he's already experiencing it simultaneously. Uh, mm-hmm. That was a nice thing. But there is the fourth one, and the fourth one is herself. It's 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 Laurie, and you know, and it, it ends with this joke where there's like, you know, what did you do? And she's like, I'm the girl who threw the brick up, and you know, she jokes that the brick comes down and hits God in the head, and uh, that's the that's the joke. And she even calls him John before she hangs up. You know, she's running out of time. There's like a timer on this call, and we get this punchline into the whole episode where the metaphorical brick lands right in front of her, which in this case 
is the car. I believe it's the same car from last episode that was in the magnet, right? I think so. Yeah, that's my yeah. assumption. And I love that we, obviously we know it was on a ship that had a magnet and it's probably just been dropped from the ship and that's all it is. It's just, it's just a coincidence. But she looks up at Mars and just sees Mars glowing and she's like, she she, she she takes it as Manhattan almost as like giving her this like clue this 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 gift of here look into this like she's looking up and smelling at Mars. Is that what that was? I didn't think that was Mars. I thought that was just like the light from the ship. I mean, maybe it is, but I don't think she thinks that. I, th- I think she's looking up at Mars and smelling like she's like, oh, he helped. He stepped in and did okay. something. Um. But people in the comments back me up here. I don't think I'm crazy here. I think that's what she was, <laughs> what what the mood was for her in this moment. I mean, sometimes you can see Mars with the naked eye, but I don't, I don't think it looks red with the naked eye. I think it would look, that looked like a bright light, but it, maybe it was. Maybe I just was read it also. Well, I mean, you could just chalk it's that good. up to like a dramatic license. You could also chuck it up to he's Doctor mm-hmm. Manhattan. He can make it glow red and bright if he wants to. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Uh, you could also just you. you could chuck it up to uh, her seeing what she wants to see. You know, it's from her perspective. From her perspective, yeah, that true. was like Mars. Um, How much do you love that that Lori is now just the comedian? She's just become her father. Oh yeah, that's that's very true. She is a complete. I mean, she opens up the show with a joke and closes it with a joke. She's bitter. Mm-hmm. She kills and she doesn't play by the rules anymore because and she doesn't have she just has disdain for everything now yeah she doesn't believe that she doesn't believe in heroes she hates heroes especially she's on an anti she calls every hero a joke yeah <laughs> she, she's an anti-vigilante task force like leader and you know we, we start with her in this bank case where it looks like she's a bank robber and obviously we just know that that's not who she, she is but this, this like fake batman comes in and he's even doing the christian bale voice it sounds like yeah like, it's good let the vigil or sorry let the hostage go like that that's like what it sounds like um <laughs> and it's really good stuff and she is like nah, nah, we're all fbi and they all pull out their badges and it's a stain he's like oh shit <laughs> like i love that he said oh shit in the batman voice <laughs> that really made me laugh and, and yeah. the rest of them this is our introduction and she comes in and or she goes home rather um and we we set up and i love like so so the uh deb uh, the, the senator kane who we introduced to last episode at the party which was uh, I, I liked that they kind of set him up last episode because I, I pointed out that they made such a big deal about setting him up that oh he's definitely yeah. coming back so here he comes in and we'll get to the everything else that happened in the scene but i want to mention the shot towards the end of this where there's that uh the the, the fourth quadrant like painting behind her of the four heroes and her own yeah. head is covering her her square and it's like such a perfect shot. It's like here's Manhattan, here's Night Owl, here's uh Veit, and then like she's covering the other one and you just it's it's the first thing that really tells you this is her. Like if you didn't already yeah. get it, if you didn't get it from the name, if you didn't get it from anything else, she's she's Silk Spectre. That's who she is. Uh that was really neat. Yeah. Although I think I I think I don't if when you read the, the comic, like she's just she hates the comedian so much because of what he did to her mother and seeing her now like become the comedian i wonder if it's because she hates her mother now i don't know like she's trying to to not be like her so she accidentally became her father in a way yeah i don't don't think she knows she's become her father or at least if she does know it she didn't know right away you know telling jokes who knows i but i I don't think she's because her father was beyond redeemable right her father was like past the line where you can never root for him again i feel like she is like not not that i'm expecting it from this show (laughs) i can see this just being miserable and like making it but i mean this is the world created him and now the world is creating is turning her into him in a way but her story could be i think it's really fascinating but her story could be a path of redemption like her story could could be her finding hope again and like mm-hmm. you know becoming something else and you know we hear a lot of interesting things in this scene obviously he gives her the job that she's going to tulsa uh you know he thinks it could be a vigilante it could be something else um and I, and it made me it made me it occurred to me vigilantes are illegal but it made me think oh that's right like um like uh, what's her hero name again angela uh, sister knight like sister knight in the uh, red i keep forgetting the goddamn names red, red scare red scare like and you looking know glass. looking glass they all have badges like you know when you see her in costume she has a police mm-hmm. badge on her way so she's not like this unsanctioned vigilante like she's you know that, that laurie's chasing after 
But, but the Tulsa thing seems to be only in Tulsa. Like like all the other cops don't wear a mask. It's just a Tulsa thing because of their environment. Because well, no, he said, the 7th Cavalry. He, no, he did say it, it sounded like it had already spread to some other cities, but they, they definitely started it. Like Because he, he listed a few that it seemed like... Yeah, it, and it was this yeah. senator's idea who is the senator from Oklahoma. Yeah. So it started in Tulsa, but it's been, it's been kind of spiraling out to other cities, so other people are adopting it. And later on we hear yeah. her thoughts on this, but uh, Laurie's thoughts, that is but i love um, it but uh she's so, funny <laughs> so she is really funny uh they, they tease um like this thing in a cage and like, i think you think it's maybe a snake because like she's feeding a mouse oh no i knew what it was right away i, I I'll, I'll be i felt like an idiot when i found out but i never occurred never occurred to me it was an owl until <laughs> until he looked at it and i went oh okay that's good and then yeah. there's a reference where he says you know like you do this like you know i'm a powerful center i can maybe, maybe make anything happen maybe even get your owl out of the cage and i went oh dan's dan's yeah. in prison oh so we know patrick wilson's in prison somewhere. <laughs> well, because no, I, could... I can't remember his name <laughs> no he's uh he'll be like 60 though so he'll be it'll be whatever the equivalent of, of gene smart is out, he's in prison somewhere yeah. for being a vigilante past the keen act or whatever uh, dan i don't remember his last name but dan Dead. okay yeah i can't remember <laughs> uh so so that's interesting it also maybe implies that you know vigilantes became illegal is that why he's in prison like did he continue being a vigilante uh and that's why well yeah they both were yeah. like vigilantes for a little while but no no but i mean wasn't the keen act in the watchman oh sure but what i'm wondering is though did he still do it after she became a part of this task like when she started like putting them away was that before he got arrested or after mm. Did yeah, she arrest maybe him? Maybe he's the only one who got caught. Yeah. Although, if she arrested him, though, it's kind of did weird she that arrest she... him? It, it's weird, though, if she did arrest him and she still wants him out, Sounds though. Sounds like she wants him to be released. Yeah, so. exactly. So, yeah, maybe that doesn't make much sense, but uh, it was a thought that occurred to me. Uh, so, now, a really great scene. I wonder uh, how he feels about her having a big blue dildo. <laughs> Oh, we're skipping to that. I was going well, to get there. Well, he's I can't help it. It's been on my mind. Of course, of course it is. Because I wasn't even going to... Let's call, that, let's call that scene what it is. That was almost attempted suicide. Because that thing, if if she put that all the way in, it was going to That's damage novelty, organs. Right? <laughs> What's that? That's like a novelty thing, right? It's not... Yes. Yeah. No. I mean, that, only. that that thing that thing would do more damage than giving birth, and then it'd probably mess up her organs. Oh my god! It was it was like this thick. It was. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was. Maybe a he had to approve it first if for before the sales. So. Oh, you think Manhattan went into like a a, a a sculpting booth and like got got his dick modeled? I mean. <laughs> He's Dr. Manhattan, he can do whatever he wants, but it's not like, it's not like nobody knows what it looks like. He doesn't wear clothes. I know. <laughs> this is, yeah, I mean, that was, it was a good laugh, don't get me wrong. It was a funny moment. Um, right. But my first thought was, that will kill you. Don't be stupid now. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's just a, like a, a flashlight. Uh, you know, we didn't see or turn it on. But that's the thing, let's analyze this a little bit, actually, because it's not like Manhattan chose this thing. This is not Manhattan's ego. Right, this is Laurie who's who's purchased this item in his memory, and but it looks like a vintage thing, right? Because she has like a, the case. Well, that's the other thing. The this, giant case that it comes in. This comes in. This like comes a, in. A magazine thing. It looks like. I don't well, know. This, this comes in the sort of metal case you take audio equipment around in. It's like a safety case to protect it from damage. It's in foam. Like yeah. it, it's the kind of thing you see in Mission Impossible where it's like handcuffed to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> That's how much she cares about Excuse it. Excuse me one second. I mean, she chose the regular human penis. She did. She she went with the, the young like, intern uh, guy who He's clearly, yeah, hoping for this. <laughs> he's got a crush on the on the older woman. Yeah, um, he's like. I mean, I mean, he's not like super young. He's 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 got a PhD or whatever, so he's at least like twenty five. He's not like t you know a baby, but compared to her, he's like. <laughs> Like he could, he's young enough to be your son, right? <laughs> this is, this is yeah. It is. Like, <laughs> so he keeps trying to bring up her her past, and she's just like, "Look, kid, you want an autograph?" He's like, "Don't call me kid, I'm a man." <laughs> so, and like, has his own little vigilante mask, <laughs> just conveniently. Yeah, I feel I feel like though the actual line was not "I'm a man," it was 
don't call me a fan <laughs> i believe is the exact yeah line. <laughs> right don't call me a fan <laughs> i have a phd <laughs> <laughs> i did a thesis yeah so <laughs> anyway that's rewind back right so she goes to this meeting where the fbi dudes are like you know showing like the, the evidence of the, the tulsa case um and again, we get the evidence of uh, of the guy's fandom because it's like the, this like page of Rorschach's journal comes up, and the guy's like, "Is it the F and eighties? No, it's not. So no one gives a shit about Rorschach." Next, um, but they won't let her go alone, so she picks him, and they're on like a private jet going to Tulsa, and uh, yeah, he asks some questions about like you you knew Vite, right? Like you know, we heard he died, but I, I heard you know. Like, I know a guy who thinks he just, like, got plastic surgery and he's hiding. <laughs> like, there's all, like, these he said, theories. like, in the Antarctic, right? Which is where we yeah. left him. Yeah, that, that was so, the last place we saw him, yeah. I mean, I have a ton of questions about fight, so... We'll get to well, we'll, when we get to fight. We'll get to it. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, they land and, like, again, there's you know, some bickering in the car. like him, you know, asking for a question. She goes to... Uh, the, the station, the place where they've got the pod, where Looking Glass does his thing, and she kind of interrupts like a like a like a beat down interrogation kind of thing happening, and mm-hmm. again she made me laugh because she's like, uh, "Excuse me, sir," because that's like because Red Scare and this other woman are like beating the shit out of this guy, and mm-hmm. he, she's like, "Excuse me, sir, I'm I'm in the FBI. Uh, are the, are you, is your civil rights being violated?" It's like, "Yeah, they're beating me up," and uh, oh, I, you know, I was just kidding. I don't really care. <laughs> 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 that was good and she she, she kind of she clearly has disdain for all this like mask wearing because you know she she doesn't seem to like this she talks to looking glass and she tells him to take the goddamn mask off and uh and she's like i know your name she calls him by his name which she's not supposed to know but obviously she's high up in the fbi she has access to information yada 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 and she's like making fun of his uh his racist detector as she calls it um he's like it's more complicated than that give him a button back let's not press him a button yeah uh, but she's, you know, it's like, oh, well, she's got a day off. She's, she's looking for Sister Night. Well, she's writing a eulogy, so she's she's got a day off. The funeral's in a couple of hours, and she's like, oh, I better go and put on something black. And she comes to the funeral, and we have uh, this, like, cause this is the first, because obviously Angela's been the main character the first couple of episodes, so it's kind of weird this episode not seeing her until, like, at least halfway through the episode at the funeral. And... Yeah, especially after that cliffhanger of an ending. Yeah. Yeah, all I was thinking is like, what's going through your head right now, Angela? You just saw a car get taken away with a big magnet. <laughs> well, well, indeed, has friends in high places. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and we, we we get you know she kind of like that does the phony kind of nice thing like oh I'm sorry for your loss we should talk over coffee kind of thing, um, and then the funeral itself happens and Angela is given the eulogy. And apparently they made a pact after the whole white knight incident that if you know one of them died, the other one like had to agree to like do what the other one wanted in the eulogy. And he's got her singing a song, and like Laurie actually starts clapping along to it and gets everyone going. Like she, you know, gets into it. Uh, mm-hmm. But of course, as this is all happening, we see one of the cavalry in a Rorschach mask has tunneled because there's a lot of security. Um. Uh, around the the funeral, right? Because uh, they make them given their guns. Although, although we see a lorry strap like one to her her ankle, so she's got one just in case. And this guy comes out with a bomb strapped to his chest. He he wants to send her because he's a, a quote quote unquote racist traitor, and he's going to blow everyone up. He's attached to his heart, and if he dies, it'll go. And as the guy as the senator's going with him, Laurie just shoots him in the head, kind of calling his bluff. But then it starts beeping. It's like oh shit, everyone run. But Angela has this great idea. She drags the body into the open grave and then pushes Judd's coffin on top of him and then runs for it. So Judd essentially leaps on the grenade for everyone <laughs> and gets blown to yeah. yeah. So that was that was darkly funny. I I was kind of laughing at that. I have to admit. Yeah. Um, that show is very good at doing something and uh, making it funny in a dark way without taking away from the drama of the moment. Yeah, I thought the last episode too was really, was really quite funny, mm. as well. And um, uh, yeah, this one, this one too. This one was mostly Laurie, but oh. yeah, pretty dark. I, I think also, you know, it, it doesn't quite seem as bad after you know we're now a little bit skeptical of, of Judd, Judd's yeah. character. <laughs> yeah, we're we're thinking he's he's maybe very very shady. Uh, so yeah. 
Uh, he literally what? had skeletons in his closet. So. <laughs> yeah, well, Angela put his skeleton to good use. So, uh, <laughs> afterwards, uh, Laurie steals uh, coffee from uh, the dude and <laughs> goes to talk to uh, Angela, who's got her, her goggles back on, her red, fancy red x ray goggles. Uh, and she comes out the tunnel that the guy climbed out of, and she's like, hey, let's have that coffee now. And she calls her by, you know, Sister Knight, like, you're making it clear, I know who you are. And she gives this speech, this great speech about how, you know, she asks this question, like, what, what, what do, what's the, how can you tell the difference between a, a a vigilante and a cop with a mask? And she's like, I don't know. And she's like, yeah, me neither. You know, she mm-hmm. really makes this point. And she gives this whole speech, and... Like that's that's kind of intimidating speech, you know. You know, like you, you good guys, you think you're good guys because you do this and you do that, and I eat good guys for breakfast. She makes this big whole speech, and I love this thing at the end where there's like a po- like there's like a couple of beats with like sort of like dramatic silence where it's like waiting for Angela's reaction, and then Angela just goes, "Ooh!" Like she might have, <laughs> she might as well have done the jack off saying that or and walked out. Like it was like yeah. basically like you try to scare me and I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Yeah, Lori is intimidating though. Like she did a really great job with Looking Glass, mm. um, and I don't think it was just the badge that everybody else was listening to. You know, she's 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 good at at she's good at, at chal- talk. She's she's good at challenging them on everything they say. She's good at kind of pointing yeah. out the flaws and making it clear that she is going for the jugular. I think I think Looking Glass like. There were so many parallels with him in the last episode with him and Wart- Rorschach, even the way like he ate was very reminiscent Mm -hmm. of the way like Rorschach ate his beans and it so we already like those of us who who know the film or the or the graphic novel have a very clear idea of of Rorschach's character and he does not get intimidated by anybody well I I think that Laurie can come in here and just make him take off the mask (laughs) and kind of emasculate him in a way where he's just like yes ma'am well yeah i think <laughs> that's important I, I, is, but i think that's know, i think that's important in the sense that she if, by by making him kind of this conduit rorschach in the show the fact that she comes in and belittles him and easily has the upper hand kind of shows how she's changed not that he really is rorschach because he isn't he's just sort of well laurie and rorschach never had a pretty very good relationship well no anyway because i mean rorschach hated women <laughs> well yeah but exactly that's my point though is that but she never like won this clearly she never had the upper hand on rorschach the way yeah. that she does with him in this scene so it shows how much she's changed but likewise what it also does for angela is that by having angela not give a shit when she tries to intimidate her mm-hmm. it clearly establishes like you know how strong she is how strong will she is how what separates her from looking glass and the others that she is like the one who's not going to be intimidated by her she's not going to be phased at all uh by mm-hmm. laurie's bullshit uh and that was kind of good and laurie's reaction as well to her non-reaction uh was also it was a fascinating it was the acting in this scene was great it was, it was maybe my favorite scene of the episode just from an acting perspective that's why you get regina king right <laughs> yeah yeah this is what you cast for she's incredible yeah regina and jean smart as well jean, jean smart's this weird actress for me who she's been in so much she, she's been in a lot but like i feel like i only started to get like discover her when she was already maybe like 50 years old so she's she's this actress who i think is really good but she didn't exist before the age of 50 <laughs> it's kind of mm-hmm. weird it's kind of like morgan freeman morgan freeman feels like he never existed before the age of 50 but he's been around a long time since then <laughs> just being an old man and it's been great yeah <laughs> um but she's she's good because I, I think i first saw her in season five of 24 but really where i really start to like her was season two of fargo and then she was in uh, uh legion uh, more recently um and now she's in this so you know she's she's uh... i haven't seen her in any of those things <laughs> <laughs> i don't really know where i know her from she's just kind of like a that guy person for me yeah that's true um but no really really good uh, and this after this obviously we're to go back to the the motel where we get the 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 dinosaur deck uh <laughs> Maybe dinosaurs had small decks. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's a, a bad comparison. I'm assuming that a T-Rex had a reasonable size penis. Because <laughs> he's a T-Rex. I don't know. You know what they say about arm size. <laughs> 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 yeah, so they go back. Uh, she ends up having sex with the guy. We don't really see it. She just sort of knocks on his door and then we sort of see her lying there next to him after after the fact. He He's sleeping like a baby. Um, with his mask on. <laughs> <laughs> with his mask on. I bet he was wearing that during sex. Oh, yeah. He was, he was so wearing that during the sex. Uh, so, 
and this is where she gets out of bed and goes to make the call on the the manhattan phone booth thingamajig and that's where we sort of wrap wrap around to everything else uh so she's been given this evidence and it's worth mentioning that when she was questioning angela she did talk about finding wheelchair tracks at the tree and was trying to ask questions about that so presumably this car finding this car uh is going to lead her maybe down that path and especially since i'm pretty sure this is angela's car <laughs> if i remember right yeah so why, why angela why did your car fall out the sky <laughs> explain that to me please that'll be your first question no doubt <laughs> yep i mean we we sort of saw in the trailer that they seem to be working together in some way whoa whoa whoa, whoa. Well, I, we got in trouble in the comments in episode one for talking about what was in the previous or the next time on's well, this was the next. This is like the original trailer, trailer for the series. Uh, some people avoid them, so we're, we're, we're best avoiding it. All right. <laughs> best avoiding it. Are we allowed to spoil things that happen in the comic book since this is a sequel? Oh yeah, yeah. The comics fair game. Okay. The, the comic book is absolutely fair game. I wasn't sure. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about Rorschach dying. We can talk about <laughs> I don't know whatever else. Uh, squids. Squids. <laughs> Vietnam comedian Nixon. I don't know. All right, let's talk about Vite. Let's talk about Vite. Yes, but we left. So, uh, Vite is making a suit. He's doing some sewing. He's got an old sew 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 sewing machine with a pedal, uh, and he's he's making Candy a leather. Yes, and he's 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 making Union uh, leather. Uh, and he's <laughs> yeah. See, last week when he said, "Oh, well, I'll have use for that dead body soon anyway," I'm like, "What's the use he's going to have?" And then I'm like, "Oh, I, I would never have guessed that I'll, I'll Ed Gein style body suit." Uh, <laughs> but he makes he's making essentially like a an astronaut suit or a diving suit, right, for something. Um, and he he gets uh, one of the 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 clones in it and sends him off somewhere, presumably via like teleportation, and. He's like, it's, it's, it's pretty funny, again. It's, it's very darkly humorous because he's like, oh, that, that, you know, I'm sure this will be the one. And then the guy's like, oh, I never, never doubted for you for a second, sir. He's like, well, of course not. I, I, you never, I never programmed you to doubt, but I appreciate it all the same. Uh, kind of Did thing. he say program? No, nope, it wasn't program. No, I, I can add that myself. He said, um, oh, okay. you don't have the ability like, to. Oh, God, did I miss that? No, no, it was, <laughs> you don't have the, it wasn't the word ability, but it was essentially the same thing. I can't remember the exact sense, but it was, you don't have the. Okay trained you or something, something yeah to, to do that um okay. you lack the capability to to doubt i think was maybe the phrase but um, okay okay uh but he comes back and he's all frozen and dead and he's like shit we had a thicker thicker suit <laughs> with, with, with a thicker skin um i don't know if that well it, it he wasn't he tries to kill a cow later presumably for for the buffalo. thicker was a buffalo sorry uh, for the thicker skin um and i, I actually did laugh at myself because i thought he was going to try and fatten someone up <laughs> to, <laughs> to get, to get not, that, not that that actually makes skin thicker but you know what i mean yeah uh, yeah uh, but he, he goes to try and kill a kill, kill a buffalo and then this masked character from a distance shoots at his feet and he gets a warning letter you know he goes back and he gets uh this letter uh as he's like sitting on the table he's doing his like meditation on the table uh the weight style and uh miss cruz shanks i remember her name uh she's reading it out to him and he's just like oh ho, 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 that that games keeper or whatever or games land keeper mm -hmm. so basically what we discover here is that he's, he's actually imprisoned on this island or this area of land wherever it is he's not supposed to leave um because the guy gives him a warning like what it's you're part doing of some kind of arrangement that yeah. he, that vite seems to have agreed to like he he because he, he says to him what, what you're doing right now seems to be trying to leave like it looks suspicious it looks like you're trying to and it it does look he's trying to teleport somewhere that's, that looks yeah, like that's what he's he testing it, which violates our arrangement yeah so very curious and he, he you know he writes this letter back and he's all smug and he's kind of you know gloriously Jer jeremy irons but the, the big part of this scene though is this is actually the first scene that actually confirms who he is because we've just been assuming the entire time that he's right um but he ends this you know sincerely you know adrian veit you know <laughs> he's like really proud of it um and that's kind of where we leave him off but yeah so he's made a deal to be imprisoned here it, 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 presumably instead of you know whatever the other punishment would be <laughs> i mean right. for... and we see we see a pirate flag mm -hmm. on the beach when he's about to when he's going to look for the buffalo yeah it's like that's his it's like he that's rides his... past a, a 
a pirate flag, yeah, which was feminine of Black Freighter. Yeah, and the, it, the it, envelope comes with a seal that's also the same symbol. Yeah, it's, it's like that flags has a perimeter. Like that's his boundary. He's not supposed to go beyond that, perhaps. Right, so maybe this is where we're going to get the Black Freighter into this show. Which, I, I mean, I don't know why they're bringing it into the show, no, to be I, honest. No, I don't think we will. I, I I think they're using the symbol here. I don't know if we're going to literally get a Black Freighter. Okay. Maybe, maybe we will. Well, I mean, like, uh, some kind of parallel to that. I mean, because that... The Black Freighter, if for people who don't know, is just it's a comic book within the Watchmen. Like because yeah. superheroes exist in in this world, then we I guess comic books are mostly based on pirates. Those are like the big things. Are, are you suggesting and, he's actually in an alternate reality where the Black Freighter really happened? And this was the island where the Black know. Freighter crashed? I don't crashed? know why they would use pirate flags and because obviously we're gonna make that connection to the Black Freighter. So it has to be some something. Like maybe he's imprisoned by Doctor Manhattan. Who can make anything a reality? Uh, maybe, yeah. I mean, maybe, yeah. Maybe this masked person we saw is just a representation. He's not really like it's really Manhattan who put him here, and this is just all Manhattan's kind of world. Or, well, we know, yeah. And they, we sort of, we think we know that Manhattan can't imitate real people, though, because they sort of brought that up in the last one, last episode. Well, They're like, he can't do that. He can't look like us. But this guy's wearing a mask, so. Well, they th- they think. I mean. They think, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, so I, yeah, it's interesting. I like he's in prison somewhere. Is it Manhattan? Is this a different dimension? Is it just an island on Earth? Like, was Black Black Freighter like and the the comic and the and the comic was that based on history? Therefore, like, let's say Adrian is a fan of that comic. Did he get imprisoned on like where that that ship crashed? So maybe we'll see the ship. We'll see the the the, the remnants of the ship from like a hundred years ago. Like so sort of scattered across the the beach or something not scattered. But. I mean, it kind of brings up why he has these bodies. Like maybe he's gonna build a raft like they did in the the Black Freighter. The guy builds a raft out of the dead bodies that are floating to get himself off the island. Yeah, maybe, maybe, uh, and it maybe you know lends to reason why he's doing this little play every week. Uh, you know, or that's uh, every week, but like, yeah, like, well, it... well, he he's done it a few times and yeah. throughout the course of the episode two, I suppose, and that seemed that seemed to indicate like maybe he was going to try to. I, I was thinking maybe he was going to try to recreate what happened to Doctor Manhattan to either make his oh. own like Doctor Manhattan that will. I I like, never uh, I, I never took that, it as that that will see him as a ma- master or maybe try himself no I, I i never i never i never took it as that because it never felt scientific it felt purely about resentment it felt purely about laughing at the story because he th- this felt more like an emotional like like obsession to me than it did like him trying to accomplish something um with okay. the play it, that felt this felt that felt super like just about him and a really egotistical I'm going to watch this performance. And I will say, I laughed out loud when he burned the guy alive. Like, I really thought that was funny. And I know that makes me yeah, sound sick. Yeah, because he has, like, this big yeah. crank that he puts, pulls down. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's, like, burning inside the, the, the fake very, chamber. like, Looney Tune-esque. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah it was good. Glorious. Um, yeah, I don't know. I was thinking maybe that was just, like, a like a foreshadow or something. <laughs> Things to come. Who knows? Like, maybe he's going to try to recreate it. I think or... it seems like he's trying to escape and he's using his clones or whatever they are to test his, his system. Do you think they are clones of Manhattan and Jenny Slater, though? Jenny Slater? Uh, I never they considered that. Because they look kind of like them. Well, this is the weird <laughs> thing, is that we don't know what they'd look like because obviously the comic book was a comic book and this is a TV show, so it's not like we can just recognize them. You know? No, I mean, they have the sim- similar features, I suppose. I, I always think of later with the with the dark hair yeah and i don't know <laughs> i know i don't uh but it's, it's definitely interesting there's, there's a lot of little tidbits on those on those ozymandias scenes that are really good um so that pretty much up, pretty much wraps up episode three of of watchmen you can of course let us know what you thought of in the comments below you can like and subscribe and all that jazz you can rate the podcast on apple podcast helps out a lot if you do that it makes more people find us because they they pimp out a little bit more on the recommendations and the top lists and all that kind of stuff and you can also support us financially tara how can they do that 
you can check out our Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash TV. And you can donate as little as a dollar per month and you get a bunch of bonus features. Sometimes we tangent and that goes on there. Mm-hmm. And you've got bonus episodes of The Ace, which is our science fiction movie review show. Um, yeah, check it out. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you can get us on the Twitters at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates. And check out other content we're doing. Me and Connor, of course, are reviewing Mr. Robot right now. We reviewed a bunch of pilots in the last weekend. Uh, we did uh, His Dark Materials. We did uh, C from Apple Plus, as well as uh, For All Mankind. So a few pilots went up recently, and we reviewed those. So we'll check those out. Uh, and check out, me and Tara do a sci-fi movie podcast called The Atomic Cinema Experiment. So check out that. Uh, we talk about sci-fi movies every week. So thank you very much once again for watching and listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching TV, guys. Have you got any vanilla? <laughs>